I mean, the next, uh, the last speaker for this session is Daniel uh, Hausmann. The title of the talk is NP Reasoning in the Monotone New Calculus, and it is a joint paper with Lutz Schroeder. Okay. Um, so my name is Daniel Hausmann, and I'm going to talk about a joint work together with Lutz Schröder. We are both from University Erlangen Nuremberg in Germany. I'm going to talk about NP reasoning for a variant of the mu calculus, and by reasoning, we really mean satisfiability checking here. So here is an overview over uh, the complexities of the satisfiability problem for various modal logics. For instance, for standard modal logic K or ALC in uh, description logic terms, this problem is well known to be p-space complete, essentially because uh, modal logic formulae, they can specify full binary trees of exponential size. So the models are of exponential size, but in order to check satisfiability, it suffices to keep a single path in the models um, in memory at all times. So these paths are polynomially sized and hence we get this p-space bound. And this changes if we add global axioms or the universal modality to modal logic, where these global axioms express that a certain formula is satisfied at every state in prospective models, then the problem gets x time complete if we allow uh, these global ax axioms. And this is essentially due to the fact that models are not trees uh, any longer, but uh, can be graphs. Um, and similarly, if we uh, add fixed point operators to modal logic, then we obtain the modal mu calculus and the satisfiability problem for that is x time complete as well. Then there is this variant of modal logic called monotone modal logic, which has kind of weaker modalities, less expressive modalities. And here the satisfiability problem is uh, known to be NP complete, only NP complete. And that is also the best one could hope for, given that all these model logics contain propositional logic as a fragment and satisfiability for that is NP complete already. Uh, however, it was previously unclear, uh, this, the complexity of the satisfiability checking problem was previously unclear uh, for monotone model logic plus global axioms and also uh, unclear for the monotone mu calculus, which is obtained from adding fixed point operators to monotone model logic. And that's what we show here. We show that if we add global axioms to monotone model logic, then the problem remains NP complete. And if we add attenuation free fixed point operators uh, to monotone model logic, then the problem also remains NP complete. Alternation freeness here uh, requires that least and greatest fixed points are not nested in a dependent manner within formulae. And uh, even if we add global axioms to this alternation free monotone mu calculus, still the satisfiability problem remains NP complete. And it's kind of noteworthy here that this jump in complexity that arises for standard model logic by adding global axioms or fixed point operators it does not occur in the mo uh, monotone setting. Right, so what is this monotone model logic? Well, syntax wise, it's just the same as standard model logic. So we have Falsum, Verum, propositional atoms coming from a set of atoms closed under the negation of atoms. We have conjunction, disjunction, the box operator, the diamond operator, where the index A here comes from a set of actions. The semantics, however, differs from standard model logic. Um, formulae are now interpreted over neighborhood structures, which consist of a set of states, then a neighborhood function, and an interpretation. So the interpretation just evaluates atoms to sets of states as uh, for standard model logic, but the neighborhood function, function, it takes a pair of action and state and returns not a set of successor states, but a set of successor neighborhoods, where neighborhood itself is a set of states. So it returns set, a set of sets of states. Then, uh, the box operator, box A phi, is satisfied at exactly those states W uh, for which all A successor neighborhoods intersect with the extension of the argument phi. So every successor neighborhood has to contain at least one state satisfying phi. And dually for the diamond operator, we require the existence of at least one A successor neighborhood that satisfies phi everywhere. So this neighborhood has to be contained in the extension of phi. And then Vardy has already shown in 1989 
that satisfiability checking for this logic is in NP, actually NP complete. And essentially this is due to non-normality of this logic of the model operators. They do not allow to combine uh, knowledge over the model operators. Here's an example of a neighborhood uh, structure uh, consisting of a single state X and three neighborhoods, two A na uh, successor neighborhoods and one B successor neighborhood of X. And we have uh, these various states within uh, the neighborhood, some of them satisfying P and some of them satisfying Q. This is a formula diamond AP, which is satisfied at X because we have a single A successor neighborhood which satisfies P in every of its states, or in which P is satisfied at all states. And we also have that this box formula, box A, P, or Q is satisfied at X because in every A successor neighborhood, there is uh, at least one state satisfying P or Q, namely this one here, the left state in the upper neighborhood and the right state in the middle neighborhood that satisfies Q in this case. Here's a negative example. This formula diamond B, P is not satisfied at X uh, because the single, the only B successor neighborhood does not satisfy P in any state. And we would require it to satisfy P in all the states. Here we can already see that these modalities are weaker than standard modalities. For instance, we cannot express that some property P holds in every successor state or in at least one successor state. We can just express in all successor states that are in some neighborhood or for every neighborhood in one state. This already also shows that we cannot express global axioms or the universal modality using fixed point operators. Like for instance, with a CTL formula AGP, we can express that P is satisfied in every reachable state. So that's corresponding to the global axiom that P holds everywhere but uh, a similar thing does not work in monotone model logic. So global axioms are a proper extension of a monotone new calculus. So what's this monotone new calculus then? Well, it's just uh, obtained from monotone model logic by adding fixed point operators. So we have this set of fixed point variables var, and x uh, comes from this set of fixed point variables, and we also have these fixed point operators, mu x and mu x mu x standing for greatest fixed point, mu x standing for least fixed point. Then uh, the extension of formulae is now depending on evaluation sigma, which maps fixed point variables to sets of states. And the extension of a fixed point variable then is obtained just by looking up uh, evaluation of x. And for this mu x, we take the least fixed point of the argument formula phi interpreted as a function. And dually for this new x, we take the greatest fixed point of the argument formula phi interpreted as a function. Here, this least fixed point uh, operator comes with the intuition that the argument formula can be uh, unfolded, or that the fixed point can be unfolded finitely often uh, until it eventually has to be satisfied, while for the greatest fixed point operator, finite or, unfold, or end unfold, infinite unfolding is allowed. So the, uh, this uh, monotone mu calculus has appeared in uh, previous research in various forms. For instance, epistemic logic is an instance. Uh, here we have operators diamond A phi coming with the intuition that some agent A knows uh, phi to be true, uh, corresponding to the situation that there is a neighborhood where phi holds everywhere. Then we have this concurrent PDL, an extension of propositional dynamic, dynamic logic PDL which was introduced by Pelleg in 1987. And it is geared towards par parallel non-deterministic systems and has model operators of this shape here. Uh, diamond alpha phi expresses, uh, where alpha is a program, expresses that there is some execution of alpha, of the program alpha, uh, so that all the end states reached by this execution satisfy phi. Similarly, there is game logic uh, introduced by Parikh in 1983, where this index of the model operators then is uh, a game, not a program. And uh, this formula here, for instance, comes with the intuition that the player Angel, one of the players, has a strategy to achieve the argument when playing this game alpha. Now, it may not be obvious uh, why and how these logics embed into the monotone mu calculus, 
but it works similarly as the embedding from PDL to the standard view calculus. So for CPDL, the programs have this shape here, just like in uh, PDL. Uh, we have concatenation of programs. We have this non-deterministic choice between our program alpha one and alpha two and finite iteration of programs, but we have this additional parallel operator. So that has the intuition of parallel execution of alpha program alpha one and program alpha two. And then we have uh, these atomic programs as well in this test. And now these uh, formulae of, uh, from CPDL can be embedded into the monotone new calculus by defining two embedding functions, one for formulae, sharp, and one for programs, tau, and they are defined mutually recursive. And as expected, I guess, uh, the non-deterministic choice between programs map is mapped to disjunction, the parallel execution of programs is mapped to conjunction, and uh, for instance, atomic programs are mapped to these model operators. And crucially, these, uh, this iteration of programs gamma, it's mapped to a least fixed point corresponding to the finite iteration of program gamma until eventually the argument has to be satisfied. So there's one problem with this embedding though. Uh, it does not produce guarded formulae. So in guarded formulae, uh, the fixed point variables all stand, are, occur only uh, under at least one modal operator within their binding fixed point formula. And this is not the case uh, because if you take, for instance, the problem A star or B and that to the star, uh, then the resulting formula here will not be guarded. But uh, we deal with this problem by taking, uh, by defining the size of formulae to be the cardinality of their closure, also known as the fischer lartner closure, or can also be seen as the syntax graph of formulae. So that's a very small measure for size of formulae. And then it was shown by Bruse and others in 2015 that a transformation from unguarded to guarded formulae uh, only increases the size of the closure polynomially. So what we can do is first translate to the monotone new calculus, then transform to a guarded formula, and the whole procedure will give a polynomially sized formula. And for the monotone new calculus, this works similarly, uh, just that we have games instead of programs as indices of the model operators now. And uh, here we have the intuition, for instance, for this alpha one union alpha two, that player angel, one of the players gets to choose whether alpha one or alpha two is to be played. And for the intersection, the other player, say devil, gets to choose whether alpha one or alpha two is to be played. Then this uh, iteration for this alpha star iteration here, player angel has to eventually decide to stop iterating game alpha and satisfy the argument. And for this dual, iteration operator alpha to the times, which is new here. Um, it's uh, the devil player who gets to choose when to stop the iteration of playing the game alpha. And here infinite plays are allowed. So indeed this uh, times operator or gamma times, it embeds to a greatest fixed point and using conjunction, uh, meaning the choice for the player devil. Then what you can see is that well, CPDL is just a fragment of game logic and uh, both of them embed into the monotone new calculus. But CPDL is also a fragment of the alternation free game logic. Alternation freeness here means that star and times formulae are not nested within each other. So least and greatest fixed points are independent of each other. And then this alternation free game logic embeds into the alternation free monotone new calculus. Where again, alternation free monotone new calculus formulae um, have the property that least and greatest fixed points do not interfere with each other. They are not nested dependently. And the method that we are going to show here, this NP result, it will work only for the alternation-free fragment of the monotone new calculus. And hence it will also work for CPDL and alternation-free game logic. Then I can come to the main result now. Alec already has shown in his paper in 1987 where he introduced CPDL that the satisfiability checking problem for this logic is X time complete. However, uh, he first had to change the semantics of uh, CPDL before he could show that. So he restricted to relational models in which our neighborhoods essentially have just a single state. And then these are relational models. And this means that PDL trivially embeds into CPDL 
and hence, because PDL is X prime complete, CPDL also is X prime complete. But this really changes the semantic of the logic before showing this X prime completeness result. And what we show here is that when the semantics is not changed, so we use the original semantics, then the satisfiability problem is NP complete, not just for CPDL, but also for the alternation free monotone mu calculus, even if we add global assumptions to it which are a proper extension of the alternation free monotone mu calculus. And we prove this by reducing to satisfiability games. These are two player Büchi games with just polynomially many nodes for one player, for Elise. And as uh, kind of usual for uh, proofs, uh, satisfiability proofs for mu calculi, we do this uh, by using Tableau as a stepping stone. So what we really show is that phi is satisfiable if and only if there is a Tableau for phi, if and only if Eloise wins the satisfiability game for it. Okay, so let us now fix a formula, alternation-free, um, possibly involving fixed points and global assumptions, and let n be the size of its closure. And then I want to introduce the Tableau rules here. We have uh, standard rules, uh, or Falsum and Atomic Clash, no conclusions. And we have several rules for uh, proposition operators with conclusions. For this junction, we have two conclusions, either left or right disjunct is chosen. For fixed points, we have this unfolding rule, which maps, uh, transforms the fixed point formula to its argument, in which, however, the fixed point variables are replaced by the whole fixed point itself again. And crucially, we have this modal rule, which just picks one diamond uh, operator and one box operator and continues with the arguments. This is a crucial deviation from standard model logic where um, one diamond is picked, but all boxes from gamma have to be considered. So we do not get just two formulae in the conclusion, but O of n formulae actually. This also shows that uh, modal branching is kind of restricted for monotone modal operators. And this is the main reason why we can get this NP result. Then we have this alphabet sigma here, which identifies rule applications. For instance, we have this uh, letter phi zero or phi one here, which identifies the application of this, this junction rule and the choice of the B's conclusion. For instance, if B is zero, then we take the left conclusion. And if B is one, we take the right conclusion. So words over sigma identify path through Tableau. Now uh, we want to track single formulae along path in Tableau. And to do this, we define uh, this non-deterministic tracking function, gamma, which takes a formula and uh, lets are identifying a Tableau, uh, an application of a Tableau rule, and this returns a set of formulae. For conjunctions, this really is uh, non-deterministic, so we track both formulae, both conjuncts. For disjunctions, it chooses the selected disjunct phi b, which is given by the letter a. And uh, for uh, the modal operators, if we select diamond a phi 0 and box a phi 1, and if psi is, so the track formula is the diamond formula, then we track to the argument of the diamond formula. And if the track formula is the box formula, then we track to the argument of the box formula. So this gamma here tracks single formulae through rule applications in Tableau. Now we want to track uh, least fixed point formulae, formulae originating from least fixed points, because in order to, for the input formula to be satisfied, we need to ensure that least fixed points are satisfied after finitely many unfoldings. Uh, so we have this notion of deferrals, DFR, which are formulae uh, which belong to least fixed points, which are generated by least fixed points. And we have to avoid infinite uh, sequences of deferral tracking. Hence, we can define delta by restricting gamma to the just uh, tracking deferrals, just tracking least fixed point formulae. And then delta can be seen as the transition function of a non-deterministic Kubichi automaton, uh, which is accepting the bad branches within Tableau. The bad branch is a path within a Tableau. Remember that a, sequen, a word over sigma identifies branches, path in Tableau. And such a branch is bad if it contains the infinite unfolding of a least fixed point, so if it contains an infinite uh, trace according to delta. Then we can now define what Tableau are. Uh, they are just finite graphs constructed using Tableau rules. So the nodes are labeled with sets of formulae and the rules are have to match 
these nodes and then the transition within the graph, transition from premise to conclusion of Tableau rules and crucially all the traces of least fixed point formulae using this delta here need to be finite within uh, Tableau. So really these fixed points need to be satisfied. Then it's a standard theorem to show that uh, formula is satisfiable if and only if there's a Tableau for it. And well, this is really just a standard proof, but you involving the monotone modality instead of the standard modality here. And then we can come finally to our satisfiability games. They are Bichy satisfiability games. So there are two players, Eloise and Avalan, and Eloise wants to infinitely often reach the winning state from this set F here. And the idea is that we use a general, generalized version of the focusing method due to Lange and Sterling, where we focus least fixed point formulae and want to finish the focus infinitely often. So nodes really are pairs consisting of uh, sets of formulae, two sets of formulae, each containing at most two formulae. And uh, one component of these nodes uh, is concerned with the tableau reasoning and the other uh, component is the focus that has to be finished infinitely often. So that's for the least fixed point part. And then uh, it's Eloise's goal to reach an empty focus. So a node with empty set as second component infinitely often. Uh, the Abelard nodes then are uh, states, which means saturated sets of formulae. And uh, again, we have two components here, saturated set of formulae for the Tableau component and also for the focus component. And crucially, there are polynomially many Eloise nodes here, but exponentially many Abelard nodes. And then the, for the moves, uh, the moves are defined as follows. So if we have a uh, Tableau component Psi and uh, focus component Phi, and it's Eloise's turn, well, then she has to pick a propositional word. So we condense all the propositional applications of a rule and have to pick uh, such a word that uh, as well, that gamma of uh, the Tableau component and using this word uh, W and also the transformation of the focus component phi under the word W, both of them reach a state, a saturated set of formulae just containing modal operators. So that's a whole propositional reasoning step. And we do not only track the Tableau component, but also the focus component. And then uh, Abelard can respond from such a situation by picking two model operators, one diamond operator, one box operator from the Tableau component gamma, and then going to the conclusion of the model rule. And for the focus component, while well, we have two cases, either it uh, is not the empty set yet, then we keep on tracking the uh, focus component phi through this application of the model rule, or it is the empty set already, and then we refocus and take those new formulae phi, phi zero, phi one as a new focus here. So that means if Eloise wins this game, then uh, there is a tableau because well, she, uh, she moves in such a way that she ensures that uh, we always can apply these tableau rules and the focus component here uh, it gets finished infinitely often if Eloise wins, which means that all the traces, the delta traces are finite within the constructed structure. So what happens here is that propositional reasoning is condensed into a single Eloise moves. That's very crucial here because we will rely on the number of Eloise uh, nodes to get our NP result. And crucially, the model steps track at most two formulae here. <clears throat> And that's due to the structure of the modal tableau rule. Implicitly, what we do here is we determinize uh, Kobushi automata using the an economic variant of the Miyano Hayashi construction, essentially. And then, uh, well, what we, the final step is to show that Eloise wins this game here if and only if there is a tableau for phi. Um, that's the case because essentially, if she wins the game, then she can construct the tableau and vice versa. So we have uh, satisfiability games with polynomially many Eloise nodes that characterize satisfiability. And then it's easy to see how this uh, satisfiability problem is in NP. Well, Eloise can or we can just guess a winning strategy for Eloise and apply it to the game. And the result is a polynomially sized structure because we pick for each of Eloise nodes at most one uh, move uh, that's picked by the strategy. So we have a polynomially sized structure and have to verify whether it's a solution of the game. So we have to verify whether in this structure, uh, accepting states are reached infinitely often and 
on all paths and whether it only uses allowed moves. Uh, but that can be done in polynomial time as well. So we have an NP algorithm to decide uh, or to solve these satisfiability games. And also crucially, we get uh, a polynomial model property here. Essentially, we can construct models in Tableau over the in the least nodes, uh, of which there are in fact only quadratically many. So that shows the main result here. And concluding, uh, what we have seen is that uh, the satisfiability problem for alternation-free monotone mu calculus, even with global assumptions, global axioms, is only NP-complete in contrast to the result, uh, Pelex result on CPDL from before. And this uh, alternation-free monotone mu calculus with global axioms, it covers CPDL and alternation-free game logic. So we get NP-completeness for all these three logics, improving upon previously known uh, results for CPDL, well, it was uh, obtained by changing the semantics. And we use the original semantics and get this NP completeness result. And also we get a polynomial bound on the model size, uh, quadratic bound to be precise. However, uh, we had to restrict to alternation free formulae where at least and greatest fixed points are not mutually nested, dependently nested. And this is a kind of strong restriction it would be interesting to uh, find out whether it would be possible to get similar results in P completeness for the full monotone mu calculus or for full game logic, not just the alternation free fragments. All right, so that's all I wanted to say. And uh, now I'm happy to answer any of your questions. So thank you for your attention and goodbye. Okay. Uh, thank you. Nice talk. And are there questions? I, mean, I don't see. I don't see questions. I mean, come, well, I mean, uh, so. Well, maybe I have a small question. Yeah. Um, uh, so the base logic here is, I believe, sort of classical, but uh, could the same be applied, say, for a background of intuitionistic or maybe structural, maybe linear logic, like mu mol or something like that? Yes, and thank you for the question. So uh, you're correct. The base logic is classical here, um, but I cannot answer uh, the question whether this would also apply in, in non-classical settings. But uh, the co-author, Lutz Schröder, he uh, should be in this uh, webinar. And if you could promote him so that he has speaking rights, maybe he could add something. Who is, who is uh, Lutz Schröder. Schröder. Aha, I see. Let's see. Schröder. Lutz is the first thing. Promote, yes, OK. It's been promoted, so Lutz, you can you can talk. Ah, right. Okay, thank you. Um, I'm not quite sure I got the question right because I had trouble acoustically. Uh, so I, I, I heard a question about um, intuitionistic or at least non-classical base logics. Is that right? Yeah, um, intuitionistic or maybe linear, maybe mu mol or by David Bell or something like that. Um, right. Um, so for, I mean, okay, I mean, this exact result will be hard, right? Because, uh, I mean, already the intuitionistic predicate, uh, sorry, the intuitionistic propositional calculus itself is already P-space hard, I believe, right? So 
uh, so we won't get uh, NP decidability of uh, any modal logic that includes it, I guess. Um, with MOL, I'm not with sure. With MOL, it's, so it's also P space, but say multiplicative linear logic is NP, a lambic right. calculus. Um, okay, so, so the basic answer to that is we don't know. Yeah. <laughs> okay, thank you. So, okay, if there are no, no other questions, so I thank everybody who attended this session and uh, we, my thanks also to the speakers.